Today we're going to be looking at the Film Emulation plugin for most major video and photo editing softwares, Dehancer Pro. Now it's worth mentioning that Dehancer Pro have offered me a license for the software in exchange for this video, however, they have no influence on what I'm about to say and they haven't seen this video before its release. Now, Dehancer Pro has been around for quite a while for the Adobe Suite and DaVinci and recently released for Final Cut Pro, which is what we're going to have a look at today. Now, if you're scared of the Node workflow that you may have seen in previous Dehancer Pro videos, don't worry, me too. The Final Cut Pro is just a bunch of sliders and it's really easy to work with, so we're going to go down the list and just have a look at a few of the options that are available to us and how we can get the best out of the plugin. So here in Final Cut, I've just imported a few clips with different lighting styles. We've got broad daylight there, some nice flashy Tokyo lights, bit of tungsten. Then here I've got one clip filmed with Filmic Pro, which we'll get to why that's important later. And also a quick clip of my face filmed on my ATD DSLR with the cine style picture style. That was a good time. Now the iPhone shots were shot with the iPhone 14 Pro in HDR, but they've been converted to Rec 709 because the Hansa Pro doesn't support HDR video yet. As we'll see with the Filmic Pro clip, HDR support might be coming in the future. Let's see. So we're just going to grab the Dehancer Pro plugin here and just slap it onto the clip. And already we've got a nice little filmic look, but let's go down the list and see what else is available to us. First, the source Rec 709, because you've already converted it to 709, we're just going to leave that as is, but we will check out the other options a bit later on. First thing, you've got temperature and tint control. Now this is great to have in Final Cut Pro so easily because normally you have to be dealing with the color board and it can be a bit annoying to quite precisely change the temperature and tint with the little moving the dot around the screen situation. So that's nice to have really easy tint control right here as a slider. Going down to the first big important step, the profile. Now they've got a huge amount of film emulations here, including, you know, you've got your Cinestills, you've got your, even some Instax stuff and a few black and white options as well. So it's really a massive, massive list of possibilities. My biggest problem at this point is you have to click on each one to see what it looks like. If they could have some kind of window open up and show, for example, a preview of every option at the same time, that would be a massive addition for a future update, perhaps. But otherwise, for now, let's just pick a nice classic Portra 800 looking nice. And they have done quite a lot of research in the color science of film emulation. And the push and pull options here do a very good job of mimicking what would happen if you push and pull Kodak Portra in this particular lighting condition. So really nice addition. Next one down, we've got the black point. Great to have a really simple slider for that and the white point. Thank you very much. Then print and color head. Those things are gonna be emulation of darkroom printing, especially. There's a lot of stuff to play with there. You can see you've got color density, tonal contrast, and also your three color head uh, tint correction. Really lots to play with, but I'm just going to skip straight past to film grain for now, because obviously that's another thing that I think the casual user is going to want to slap onto their film shots. You've got your film size, bam, you've got your film amount, bam, <laughs> film resolution. Uh, you've got your shadow and highlight amounts. You can be more, if you'd like more grain in the shadows, less in the highlights, which I think is more accurate to certain film stocks. And then you've got film positive and film negative, which do have very different film grain structures, and they've done a great job of emulating both of those options. That's a bit much, but I'm going to leave it like that because, you know, you can see it well. Now, Halation. Halation is going to make the Cinestill fans very happy. Let's go over to maybe this clip. I think it's going to be a bit better to get that on. So I'm going to put Dehancer Pro on there. Bam. And I'm going to change the film stock maybe to something a bit less funky. Portra. Actually, you know what? Let's just use Cinestill. Okay, so we've got Cinestill ready to go. I'm just going to slide all the way down to Halation. First, we're going to enable it. And then I suggest going into mask mode immediately. 
The first two things you want to check out is local diffusion and global diffusion. And just by slugging them up, you can see already we've got a nice bit of halation there. That's global diffusion as well. Just whack that up to maximum. Now, if we turn the mask off, you can see it's pretty extreme, but that's just sinister halation right there. Let's just play the clip. So there you go, very nice, very solid Sinistil emulation for all those Halation fans out there. Now let's go down to the next one in the list, which is Bloom. And this is a good way to save yourself a bit of money by not buying the Bloom filters for your camera. Let's try it on this clip here. Just gonna put that on there. Maybe choose a different film stock, uh, like uh, Fuji color. Nice, I dig it. And then let's go down to Bloom. So let's enable it and then we're going to go into mask mode and we can immediately see there's a little bit of bloom happening around the edges here. But we can play with these sliders to make it more how we want it. So the amplify slider is the most obvious option of the lot. Then your diffusion, you know, if you want it to be very harsh or more soft and diffused. Let's turn the mask mode off and we can see that's what it looks like before and after. So that bloom has given us this look, if we just play the clip. Nice. Maybe a bit too much grain on this one. I didn't actually touch anything except the bloom. I could turn the film emulation off. I could turn the film grain off and just leave the bloom emulation to emulate having a black pro mist filter without having to have one which I think is quite useful because if you've got the ProMist on and then you decide in post that you don't really like it, you can't do much about it. Whereas this way, you can decide in post if you want it. So that's a great thing to have as part of this plugin. So a little bit further down, we've got the vignette. Now, of course, Final Cut Pro has its own vignette built in, but I think with what Dehancer Pro's research has found within the film emulation world is a very natural vignette as well. And also it's just nice to have it as part of the standalone plugin, everything all in one place. So let's enable it. And then we can see the exposure up and down and you've got your size and you've got your feather, of course. So it's quite smooth, very natural vignette. Very nice to have that as part of Dehancer Pro. Then finally you've got film breath and gate weave, two things I've never used. They are from a different side of the film emulation world, which they may be for you. They're not personally for me, but they're great to have as well if that's your thing. Then a bit further down at the bottom, you've got total impact. Now this is really interesting because maybe after you've done all your edits, you think, ooh, that's a bit heavy handed. So just grab this slider and just bring it down until you get to a point where you think, oh, that, that's quite nice, I like that. So that's a quick glance at all the options available to you. There's a couple of things I wanna check out quickly and they are the profiles. This one was shot with the Filmic Pro app in 10-bit HLG. I'm just gonna put the Dehancer Pro plugin onto it and we can go up here and check out source. Then you can see they've got a lot of cameras. If I click on, for example, Sony, then you've got all of these cameras and the color science and how the emulation is gonna work is gonna change depending on the camera so they've done a really good job providing support for different color science and different cameras now i'm going to choose apple and then i'm going to choose iphone and you can see here they've got the filmic pro picture styles as options and if i put on the 10-bit hlg you can see how the clip has changed quite drastically so this is what i said earlier i think because they have supported filmic pros flat picture styles they may in the future add Apple's HDR and ProRes and Dolby Cinema picture styles as built-in options so you don't have to use a pre-conversion to 709 before starting the film emulation. That's a hope. Finally, this clip here that I shot on my DSLR using CineStyle picture style. Now, unfortunately, if I choose camera and then uh, Canon, it doesn't have any of the old options. But if I choose just Cinean film log, it actually does a great job of applying the correct S-curve to the file so I can get on with editing the rest of the look as I want. So that's very cool. So that's it. That's Dehancer Pro. If you feel like picking up this plugin, there will be a link down in the description 
And if you use the code Norby, you can get 10% off your purchase, which also helps me out. So that's super appreciated. If you feel like you might want to get this plugin, please use my code. We'll be best friends forever. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in a future video. Peace.